Hello, seriously, Robert here. And today we're gonna to talk about five things that we should prepare, that we should take into consideration before an SHTF situation is directly upon us. So we're gonna look at five things that will help us be better prepared and help us if we have to bug out, bug in, or whatever the situation may be, will help us in the initial stages greatly. And don't forget about the giveaway. The giveaway is the complete NBC or CBRN suit. And check out the channel for details on that. To enter the giveaway is very easy. You just simply have to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment. The more videos that you leave a comment on, the better your odds will be at winning this gear. And looking forward to giving it away and finally getting a winner when we reach the 50,000 subscriber mark. But for this video, we're gonna focus on things that we can do right now that will make us better prepared when an apocalyptic scenario does occur, whether this be a short-term or a long-term scenario. So let's get started. Number five. Number five, the first thing that we can do to begin to be as prepared as we can possibly be is to take into consideration factors such as health, dental. This is something we can prepare for before an apocalyptic scenario is upon us. Now, when it comes to preparing this type, it's really pretty easy, but it does require some dedication. The, to get ourselves in shape is not always the simplest or easiest thing to do. It does require a lot of work and for some people, weight loss and things such as that. The better shape you're in, when some type of situation does occur, will increase your chances of survival. So to prepare in this aspect, what we wanna do is take care of the things that we can take care of now, the things that we can take care of before a situation is directly on top of us. And this is things like shedding the unwanted pounds, maybe getting a little stronger if I need to get a little stronger through weightlifting, through uh, steel weights and things like that, or improving my endurance with aerobic exercise or, or any type of cardio that's gonna improve my endurance and improve me, make me physically stronger and some of these aspects, things such as dental, if we have teeth that are bothering us, if you have some types of issues that can be taken care of before this situation, don't put it off. One of the biggest killers in life is procrastination. And if we procrastinate too much or think about, well, this is something I'm gonna take care of a little later on, then that little later on never comes for a lot of people and in a lot of cases. And another aspect to take into account is vision, your eyesight. If you need the type of surgery that will improve your eyesight, the LASIK surgery, and if you can afford this, then by all means, this is something that we wanna take care of beforehand. And also, for like in my case, I, I do have to re use reading glasses when I'm reading smaller text, smaller print on something. And this is gonna be a difficult situation when my eyesight does degrade somewhat throughout the years. Now, when it comes to prepping, I know the way that I think about it is I'm prepping to live. I'm prepping to survive. I'm not prepping to make it through three days and then try to figure out what I'm doing. I'm prepping to survive the rest of my life, no matter what this situation may be. And having the proper things on hand will really help. And when it comes to these glasses like this, one of the things I did was, was I bought some very sturdy frame reading glasses and they're ugly, but they're really thick, they're really strong, and they'll last for quite a while. And I have a couple of extra pairs of these in my bag. And a good idea of this is say you use 1.5 magnification right now for your reading glasses, well, we know that over time, that's not gonna get better. It's probably gonna get worse. So also in my bug out bag, I do have reading glasses that are rated higher for what I, than what I actually need right this moment. And that does prepare me a little more for the future. So it's very important when it comes to prepping that we focus on not just things that are gonna keep us alive that first 72 hours, but things that are gonna improve our life from there on out. Things that are gonna give us a chance to not only live, but to thrive in this survival situation. Number four, vehicles. Vehicles are one of the most important aspects when we think about bugging out. No one wants to bug out on foot if at all possible. We want to use the vehicle if that is possible. Now I realize that there are some types of events that using the vehicle will not be possible when we start talking about EMPs or extremely destructive events in which our area is basically level, then you know vehicles may not come into play. But for this instance, we're assuming that vehicles would still be somewhat operational. 
Now, after an event occurs, one of the most difficult things to locate is gonna be gasoline if vehicles are still functional. And that's because with no more deliveries, no more trucks delivering gas to the stations, then we're not gonna be able to just go up and refuel at any given moment. But in the immediate time, in the immediate time when SHTF does begin from the beginning stages on, then having a vehicle that is reliable is a very important aspect of this. If I am able to use my vehicle to bug out of my location, to try to get to a location or whatever it is I'm attempting to do, then I need to be able to rely on that vehicle. Make sure your vehicles are in top running condition. Make sure we have the survival kits. Uh, this video is not really focusing on gear, but in our car, we should have a type of survival kit and a tool kit that can take care of minor repairs, but that can also assist in keeping us alive for a short amount of time or giving us the materials, the necessities, the tools we need to get from our vehicle to the location we're trying to get to. If at all possible, keep extra hose or two in your trunk, keep an extra belt if you use the serpentine belts on you know whatever type of belts your vehicle uses keep a couple of extra belts in the trunk if possible keep a couple of quarts of oil in the trunk if possible now storing gasoline is a whole different story because it is so flammable and it's dangerous to just store in your vehicle like that making sure your vehicle is in top running condition is one of the most important factors of survival after the event number three make a plan you know your city better than me or anyone else watching this video knows your city. You know the routes that you can take to get out of town quickly and the routes that you should avoid if you're trying to get out of town quickly. So put a lot of thought into how will I get out of town in an emergency situation. If an SHTF event does occur, then there's no telling what time of day this event might occur. If it's in the middle of the night and everyone's at home and in bed, then you know the roads will be a little more clear. But if it's any time during the day, then you can expect these roads to be to be jammed with massive uh, traffic jams from vehicles that not only have failed, vehicles that have wrecked, and a lot of other situations. So making a plan to leave if you have to bug out from your location, having an escape route to get out of the city or out of the area as fast as possible is one of the most important factors. So you don't wanna be trying to figure out how to evacuate your area after the event has happened and people are already panicking in the streets. So having a plan is not just having one route out of town. Having a plan is having multiple routes out of town and branches off of each route. And we never know where an event's gonna occur, how it's gonna occur, or what it's gonna be. So having one route or even just two routes to get out of town, we don't know what side of town will be safe and what side will not be depending on the type of event. So make a plan that will enable you to have multiple routes that you can take to get out of your location. Make sure that every member of your group or your family is intimately familiar with these routes. Drive these routes. Drive each route four, five times each. Time yourself and then average these times. And you wanna do this so you know that approximately how long it should take for someone to leave your primary location and to reach their destination through the first, second, third, and even fourth route choices. So this way you have a general idea of how long each one will take. And by driving these routes multiple times, this is gonna make you much more familiar with the obstacles you could expect to encounter along those routes, with the things that could possibly cause delays. And as you're driving these routes, take into consideration, will this road be feasible when you know traffic, everybody's trying to leave the city? You don't wanna use the main roads. You don't want that to be a part of your plan because everybody is thinking that. The fastest way out of town is always the major highway. That's what people are gonna assume. So you can safely assume that that major highway will be blocked with a traffic jam, most likely. So having plans to get out of town and just as important as getting out of town, you have to know where you're going and you have to have rendezvous locations for members of your group, members of your family. So formulate a plan, an escape plan to get out of the city before an event goes down and make sure that every member of your group is extremely familiar with this plan. Next, and probably one of the most important factors of this is 
hone your skills and abilities while you have the chance. If you don't know how to make fire and purify water, now is your chance because this is not something that I want to try to pick up when the apocalypse does happen. This is something I need to know how to do now. And this is your basic skills and talking a lot about your bug out gear also. This video is not focusing on gear, but gear without skills and gear without knowledge is dead weight. If I do not practice with my firearm, then there's a very good chance I'm not gonna use it effectively in a firefight or in any type of survival situation. So practicing with your gear, honing your skills, testing your abilities, making them better, this is something we can take into account now. This is something we can do before this event ever occurs. The better I am prepared before the event occurs is the better my chances when the event does occur. It doesn't matter what the scenario is. I need to have my basic skills in place, and these are your fire making skills, these are your water purification, these are understanding how to locate and how to properly prepare and store food, how to build shelter or obtain shelter in an urban situation. The shelter is probably gonna be a little easier to accomplish, but in a wilderness situation, we have to know the basic shelter types and how to construct these efficiently. And also some other skills, self-defense. This is one of the most important skills in my opinion. And that's because somewhere along the line, you're gonna be tested in the apocalypse. And someone's going to see something that you have and they're gonna want it and they're gonna to try to take it. So if you do not have self-defense skills, then this is the time that we need to hone these skills. This is the time that you need to decide what type of self-defense that you want to learn and stick with that type of self-defense. We don't have to be masters of the martial arts or world champion boxers, but understanding the basics of your self-defense skills and practicing those basics until they become instinct is very valuable. And this will be an important tool. It's one of those tools that hopefully you will not need, but the one time you do need it, it will save your life. So having your basic skills and also practicing with your gear. And the last one, and probably or possibly the most difficult one of all, the one that uh, it is extremely difficult and is gonna be very different for your situation than your neighbor and then someone else than me, than anyone. Every situation is gonna be different when it comes to this, and that's how to prep for those who can't prep. We all have family members that just simply don't believe that anything's gonna happen, and they, they may laugh at you, and they may say, oh, you're prepping for nothing and all this. And those are not the people that I'm concerned about. They're, they're, they're smart enough, they should, take, uh, you know, they should take heed to what's going on in the world and they should prepare themselves. What I'm talking about is the people that can't do it. The people that physically or mentally cannot prepare because they either don't have the physical ability or they don't have the mental capacity. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but I mean, when we're talking about like small children here. When you have children that are you know under the age of 10, especially when they're very young children, then it's gonna be difficult to sit down with this child and, and to really have them understand the seriousness of this type of event. Now, this is not something I'm gonna sit down with a two-year-old and talk about the end of the world tomorrow. You know, I don't wanna scare them to death. But what I'm saying is we have to think for them and we have to take into consideration their needs and place those needs above ours because it's not about us. Prepping is not about us. It's about the ones that follow us. It's about rebuilding and reestablishing and helping those who follow us and working together along the way. Now, when it comes to prepping for small children, you know, every child's gonna be different. Some have medical needs that have to be met. Some, you know, are perfectly healthy. Some are not gonna be able to deal with the situation. So every situation is gonna be extremely difficult. And this is something you have to prep for. I'm not gonna prep a 50 mile hike through the woods if I have a one year old and then I have an elderly 90 year old or something like that, that may not be feasible. We may have to take, you know, and formulate a different plan and take this into consideration. And that's what I mean by this is the hardest part to compensate for. It's really hard to formulate a plan on how I'm gonna get my 92 year old grandmother from her location to a safe location that's way in the middle of nowhere. This is gonna be extremely difficult. And this is one of the, I guess you would say, heartbreaking moments and heartbreaking decisions that people are gonna have to make. Not everyone will be able to make the journey that you have to make to get to safety. And that's something that we talk about somewhat, but we don't talk about enough. And not trying to sound morbid or trying to sound dark or anything about it, but we do have to think about the fact of who is going to be able to make this journey and who is not going to be able to make this journey. 
When it comes to small kids, kids are very resilient, but kids also don't understand what's going on around them. If you have a small baby, you know that that baby's going to cry, that baby's going to make noise, and that could put you in a difficult situation when you're trying to sneak through an area or trying to be quiet for whatever reason. And you know, these are the types of things that we have to take into consideration. For example, the smaller babies, the small kids, some of the things that we should put in their bug out bags are things that do occupy them, things that do keep them quiet and storing food for them. They can't eat the same food that we do. So this once again becomes extremely difficult. If the baby's being breastfed and the mother's present, then that's gonna work out pretty well. But if not, what if not? What if the mother is not there? and this we have no formula or whatever for this baby what would happen then and the same with the elderly when we talk about elderly or or people who are handicapped this is this is a difficult situation and it's a situation that does not get enough attention and uh, there are no definitive answers out there as far as I should do this if I have someone who's a paraplegic, or I should do this if I have someone who is mentally handicapped. There's no yes or no, no definite do this or don't do that. It's gonna be different for every situation, and this is a subject that we need to generate more discussion on on the internet. Not enough preppers are talking about this. Not enough preppers are talking about how do we get this 95-year-old person out of town with us. And I've also got a mentally handicapped person in the group and a small child or small children and possibly even a physically handicapped person. The larger the group, then the more people you're going to have that fall into these categories. And I don't want to say the more difficult that's going to make the situation, but the more planning that's going to require. Special needs people have special needs. And if we cannot provide those special needs, then that may make a difficult and painful situation for that person. We have to think about their, their aspect of it too. This is gonna be extremely painful for these people. For young children, this is gonna be a traumatic, terrifying event. This is gonna be something that some children may not recover from very well. Uh, just to mentally go from the stability of a normal life to an SHTF situation, whatever the situation is, then these young children, even though they're resilient, they're gonna be terrified. And we have to put some thought into that into how we're going to help them transition into a survival or you know survival mental attitude there. Take this into consideration now Every situation is gonna require a different plan than someone else's situation. So basically what we're looking at with uh, you know, these groups of people, or these types of people just saying, you know, the young children, the elderly, the mentally handicapped, the physically handicapped, is if we don't put some time and thought into this right now, into how to help these people and how to help them transition into a rebuilding type of uh, you know mindset and surviving through the initial apocalyptic scenario, if we don't put this thought into it now, then it's probably gonna be too late when the event occurs. It's not easy to formulate a plan after all hell is broken loose. It's not gonna be easy to determine which way should I get out of town when the streets are already full with people rioting, people looting, and things like that. So those were just some things that we could do, some things that we should take into consideration, and that being our health, along with our eyesight, our, you know, our vision, our, our dental, our physical health. We need to take into consideration, make sure our vehicles are running properly, we need to formulate a plan, not just one plan, but multiple escape routes that'll get us out of the city to a primary or a bug out location in which we can rendezvous, rendezvous with other team members and take it from there. We also need to make sure that we practice our skills, our abilities, that we hone these skills, we hone these abilities and take in as much knowledge as we can possibly take in before this event occurs. Also, we need to make sure that we formulate plans for those who cannot plan. For those who cannot prep physically on their own, the mentally handicapped, the physically handicapped, the young children, the elderly, we need to make sure that we take care of those that we love, that we care about, and those that are in our group. It doesn't do any good to survive an apocalyptic scenario if I have to sacrifice other people to do it. It's just not a good trade. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps out. Keep an eye on the channel. Don't forget about the giveaway. And for now, Serious Survivor, out.